violence. 100% chance of violence. That's what we're coming for. Win, lose, or draw, he's gonna get beat up, man. Um, I'm used to going all over the world, being gone for trips for like two weeks, you know, and like now we got a lot of people coming. I think we sold like 80 tickets, so we got lots of people coming to support, so it's gonna be crazy. Uh, he comes from a good camp, um, Fit Plus. We've known them for about 15 years. We've been good friends with Scott, his coach. So they put it, put out a lot of good fighters. It's a tough fight. You know, like we know he's a solid ground guy. Um, I'm a solid stand-up guy. So it's just uh, where the fight dictates is going to kind of dictate where the where the fight's going to go and, and what's going to happen. So we're ready for everything. We're good. Well, I think um, from what I've seen from Joe and what I know about myself, it's going to be a high-paced battle. Um, and I don't think either guy's going to be willing to give an inch. So it's going to be, I'd say there's going to be a lot of, lot of blood and guts spilled, right? Toronto, Ontario, are you ready for another fight? Say yeah! yeah! Fight number four is being brought to you by Pro Mix Connect. Hashtag EFC the movie and proper number 12 Irish whiskey. Scheduled for three rounds in the featherweight division. Here come your fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome Brad Sullivan. Well, coming out to the cage, Brad Sullivan carries a two and one record professionally into the fight tonight. And Robin, this one should be a rather entertaining bout. Brad Sullivan lost a boxing fight to Adam Hazelton in November of 2019, but in mixed martial arts, two and one overall, three and one as an amateur. He's multi-talented yep. and he's tough. And he knows what he's here to do. He's facing a, a you know, global Muay Thai fighter, somebody who's fought at the highest level, super dangerous. I know everybody involved in this. We, I mean, that's part of being at, at this grassroots level. We know everybody. Sean McLe or, uh, Scott McLean is a dear friend, and he's, he's cornering Brad here, who have commentated a couple of his fights. And then Crew Joe coming out is one of my instructors. He's one of my teachers and a dear friend. So the, the job here for you and I is to be as humanly unbiased as possible. See what is, analyze what is in this fight. And what is in this fight is that Brad Sullivan is taller, longer, probably stronger, cuts more weight, he's bigger, he's m far more experienced in grappling, wrestling, and mixed martial arts than Joe. But J Crew Joe has incredible, dangerous hands, low kicks, a strategy probably of how to approach this. So what we have here is a really awesome contest, a dangerous contest for both guys. And uh, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to be able to call it with you. Absolutely. Brad Sullivan, and you mentioned it, Robin, two and one, so three professional mixed martial arts fights. Three and one is an amateur, so four on the amateur circuit. And this is Joe Tipping's debut, but debut with an asterisk yeah. because Crew Joe is not a debuting fighter by any means. This is a man who's fought all over the globe. That's right. And Chris Crew, Chris Q, who is one of the real uh, Muay Thai OGs in this area of the world, he's been training Joe since he was 10, 12 years old. Just a little kid. Wow. So Joe knows the game of kicking people in the head. This one is going to be a whole lot of fun. Brad Sullivan is going to give a test to crew Joe Tipping, who's on his way out to the cage next. And his opponent making his way out to the red corner. Please welcome Joe Marshawn. So I've been in uh, fifth round martial arts in Stratford. Stratford is my home. And I've been training in the gym as well as watching them get ready for this fight, crew Joe and his team. And all they've been doing is wrestling. They've had people come in, wrestle him on the cage, come in, wrestle him in the open field, get him back to his feet. That's what I've watched them do. Uh, so they know what this plan is. Of course you do, right? You got 50 odd Muay Thai fights. You're fighting a tall, lanky submission guy who can kickbox. You know what he's here to do. So they prepared for it. But preparing for it is not the same thing as he has no real grappling experience outside of the gym. So that's what he knows he must deal with. And if you're Brad, you also know what you're dealing with. This guy's going to try to smash up your body uh, with, his, with his bones, the bones of his legs, the bones of his feet, his elbows, the, the knuckles of his bald fist, his knee. That's what Joe's here to try to do to you. You got to stay calm and you got to take down crew Joe and you got to get to his back. But uh, how this will shape up and, and shake out, we're going to see. Oh. 
and stoked. Now on the bookkeeping side of this, Robin, we should mention you just heard Mr. Throwdown introduce him as Joe Marchand. It is Joe Marchand tipping. Yep. We know from your experience with him that we go with crew Joe tipping, so that's where we're gonna stand for the fight. Yeah, we also know that Joe doesn't care what you call him. <laughs> the crew, the crew Joe doesn't care what you call him. He wants combat. He wants the freedom of going into a free fight with this man. I heard them and, and was around them as they were talking strategy. They said, look, this is, you know, and they knew they'd have a tough guy because who wants to fight a guy with 40 KOs globally in Muay Thai? Right. So they knew they'd fight a tough guy. They said, this is a very, very tough opponent and he, it's a winnable fight. And if you do win it, you beat a real guy, but it's a hard fight. Look at the size difference too, my friend. Yeah, this is monstrous. This is not gonna be an easy go of it for Joe Tipping, but it's not gonna be easy for Brad Sullivan either. It's the experience and combat of Tipping against the size and MMA experience of his opponent Sullivan, and we'll go in for the official introductions. Here we go, PFC fight fans. The following contest is being brought to you by Pro Mix Connect, hashtag EFC movie, and proper number 12 Irish whiskey. Scheduled for three rounds in the featherweight division, here are your fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed in white. Standing five feet, 11 inches tall, he weighed in at 145 pounds. He's a kickboxing specialist representing Fit Plus Martial Arts. He comes to the PFC cage with a record of two wins and one loss, with one of those wins coming by way of submission. Fighting out of and representing Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia, ladies and gentlemen, here is Brad the Criminal Sullivan. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black and gray trunks trimmed in blue. Standing five feet, eight inches tall, he weighed in at 145 pounds. He's a Muay Thai specialist representing fifth round. He comes to the PFC cage for his professional debut fight tonight. Fighting out of and representing Stratford, Ontario, ladies and gentlemen, here is the Harrington Hitman, Joe Marchand. Oh, Referee Todd Anderson with final fight instruction. Sullivan will be about 165 pounds right now. Joe, about 153. There's quite the size difference here. Big credit to Sullivan. About 10 people turned down Joe, fighting Joe. Yep. And about three others said yes and then disappeared a week later. So good for Sullivan. I've called two of his fights. One of them was a three-round war that he won, by, and he was really hanging tough in there. Joe will look to kick the calf early, I believe. It's there. Joe takes the center of the cage. He's in the black, trimmed with the gray and blue. Sullivan in the black, trimmed with white. Joe will have the ability to manipulate and figure out that, there it is, figure out the hot range, right? So the distance from which he can stay safe and get in without being hit and then get back out. There, fake hand to the low kick. Two to the calf now. That You see how slender his calves are? You've got a man fighting at featherweight who sicks something and cuts down and he takes the calf twice, but he's inside now. Sullivan's gonna be very tricky here. Well, he's, he's gonna have to be, Robin, because yeah. there is already a sizable welt forming on the calf yep. of Brad Sullivan, who's trying to bully now, Joe, Joe. Looked, yeah, Joe looked at, on the turn to knee, because you know what this also is? We look and we go, okay, this is wrestling. You know what this also is? It's the clinch, right? Yes. And when you fought Muay Thai, it's, and now Joe can if he wanted to take him down there, but he chose not to, because you don't want to get into that game here. Now, I watched Joe do round after round after round of this type of training, but what you don't do is know all the little details, and Joe can throw him down. Watch out for the triangle here. That triangle is, that might have been a bait. That might have been a bait. Very possibly. Yeah. Now Joe will try to work his way through here. Just put his head under the chin and then try to pressure that up. He's got to work his arm back in there. Yeah, that's where, that's okay, where it's so going to be difficult actually, he's trying to pull it through. Yep, there's... Using a bit of strength here is Joe. Pulls that through. Now he's got to slide that left yep. arm back through. And, and he stands. He'll yeah. look to stand here. Well, right or back punch. In, right back into half guard. Yep. Now, now they'll attack the knee. And Joe can put his foot in the tail and get out. 
Yeah, good work by Sullivan, man. Excellent work by Sullivan. Sullivan Even is staying when, on him. That's the thing, yeah. You, he had positions, you lose them, but you don't just surrender them and say, okay, we're in space. You stay on him, you grip the leg, you grip the hips, you come up with him, you attack something else. So now he's got Joe down and he's gonna slide into a mount, a low, low, low mount position. Joe must give up his back. And he's going to reach back over with his left arm, and Sullivan's going to throw some punches. It's but Joe is in a position to stand here, and he does. I was just going to say, Robin, it's a nice scramble from Joe to be able to slide out, get back to his feet, and now he can defend from a standing position. A little bit better spot here, although Sullivan still has that pressure up against yep. the fence on Joe. Both guys have literally done exactly what they wanted to do here. Joe wanted to kick that leg, he did it. Sullivan wanted to take Joe down and force him to wrestle, he did it. When he wrestled, Joe wanted to be able to defend the wrestling and never surrender a position, he did it. So this fight, literally they're both getting their way. Our job is to call what is, and that is what is. Joe looking for a way out, using the knee upstairs straight through. He's being that popped Sullivan yeah. back up. Yeah, he's being really smart too. Sullivan's doing a great job here, but he, he's not just saying, oh, that's a rough one. Joe's coming up, but he'll have the arm here. Now he's got the back. This is a tough spot. He's for gonna attack Joe the arm bar. He's gonna attack the arm bar. He's got it in there and he's got it hard. Now the only danger here for Sullivan is he gave up what would have been a sure body triangle on the back to go maybe Kimura here. Yeah, it was an armbar first and now it's sort of a hammerlock control position which you will try to cut back to an armbar again. So you'll use the Kimura type grip to set up a new uh, armbar. Now Joe can punch down and and then the sweep, now the heel hook is a rough one. He's, it's yeah, but he knows oh. what to do, he kicked off the elbow. I was just gonna say, Robin, what a job by Joe Tipping to recognize that and kick that elbow off to get yep. back to a dominant position. Now also, fatigue is an issue because Brad Sullivan should be working less hard than Joe from experience, but Sullivan took this on a week or two because as we said, many people didn't want to fight Joe. Joe, on the other hand, has been training for this fight for a long time. So he's going to feel happy now. He wants to kick that low leg again and then set up the left hook off it. Yeah, he wants to go right back to what he started. There yeah. it is again. And Sullivan is moving in and doing exactly what he wants to do, which is grip after he gets hit. Good for Brad Sullivan, man. All full marks to Brad Sullivan. He took two shots, closed the distance, and re recreated this, this grappling position. And he's also striking and not just trying to take it down. Very smart, very good work by Brad Sullivan. Tipping fired that right hand up top, Robin. And I think at the same time, Sullivan felt that even through the guard and thought, I don't want any Joe, part of that. Great job by he, Joe to yeah, land on top he, here. He turned him like a steering wheel. Now he's on top in half guard. His job here is not to lose half guard and to do damage. Now there's a butterfly hook. Now it's a full guard. He's got to watch yep. those legs of Sullivan yes. creeping up his yep. back. Very long legs. Yep. Joe wanted a mixed martial arts fight. And <laughs> Joe's got a mixed martial arts fight. Oh, he's got a beauty yeah. on his hands here. Sullivan yeah. is working hard from the bottom, but tipping now, opening up from the top. Under 10 seconds left in the round. Good. Now opening yeah. up again up top. Very smart to punch the high rib as well. That's a great round. Great round for both men. A really great round for both men. And a nightmare if you're a judge because that went back and forth like a pendulum. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, Sullivan did land shots too. Yes, it was one man trying to kick and punch the other and the other one wants to grapple. But Sullivan, well coached, is like, as, during periods on the fence, we don't just fight so hard to get the takedown. We knee him to the body. We punch him in the head. He did some of that too. So. I suspect the judges will see that one for Crew Joe, but there's a tough 10 minutes ahead of both these guys. Now, Robin, if you're in the corner of Crew Joe tipping, are you saying you got to go back to keeping that space and going back yep. to that low leg that you started to bruise in round one? Yes. After we touch, we move away. We touch, we circle, we touch, we circle. We get him rushing in. When he rushes in, you go uppercuts and hooks and knees. That's And that's what you come in here. Oh, he's got a good bounce going on that leg. That calf becomes very slender in a man that tall. And uh, he's trying to walk it out. Yeah, you can see yeah. that that welt on that calf. Yeah, two really bad ones early, and then three, four, five other ones in exchanges. Joe was still punching in the clinch, too, which is smart. Smart for Sullivan, too. We're not just going grappling right away. You must punch first. Now, even though Sullivan's checking those, Robin, those are going to sting. Yeah, and the reason Sullivan got that body lock is because he showed striking in that exchange. So he came in, and, and Scott, his coach, I'm sure told him, let's go full lock around the waist and around the thighs. That's a, lock, that's a locked double leg right here, and Joe resisted it twice. Now Sullivan's dropping down even lower to try to get under it. Joe will either push his head high or low, and he goes high. 
Tipping did a great job there to stop the takedown from happening by widening his base, spreading out those legs. He made himself tough to be able to be lifted up and then pulled down as Tipping <laughs> answers on exit. Yep, elbow versus elbow. Now you got to credit again, Sullivan. He's just shown just enough hands to make Joe, who has a lifetime of, okay, I have to deal with these hands, get his hands up so he can get in deep here. And again, like I said, I saw Joe do round after round after round of this with Sid Barnier with a number of really good fighters, high level fighters. Uh, but it's different, this is real, the heart rate goes up. Sullivan's gonna learn the things, Joe's tendencies and try to trick him. Remind Brad? me to ask you how Sid Barnier's doing, by the way, I haven't seen him in years. That is a badass, Sid Barnier. That is one badass. He used to fight at 135 pounds, he's about 180 right now. The hardest hitter you've ever seen in the world at Bantamweight. Good dude too. Trying to drive his way in as Sullivan looking to knee. take the arm. There's Tipping. There oh, that knee straight up the middle. Sullivan's still doing what he should, lacing the leg. Joe shakes it off. Man, they did a great job over at Fifth Round Martial Arts to prepare Joe for this. Yes, because, they did. Because Scott McLean and their whole team, uh, Brad Sullivan's team, will have said, we don't always need the takedown because if we can put this man on the fence and work him, we'll get it eventually and we'll fatigue him. So far, that hasn't been the case as Joe turns him, and now he wants to punch here. And he's got that right hand loose. Sullivan again looking for the leg lock. So, and last time we saw Joe kick the elbow off. Now he can punch from here. There's gonna be oh, some big this is punches. dangerous here. Yeah. Yeah. Joe had to be careful yep. not holding the cage. Yep. Now falls back. No, he's in trouble. Joe's in a lot of trouble here. He's in a lot of trouble. It might be over those two feet behind the leg. What this will do is damage the soft tissue outside the knee. And if it does, then Joe will not be able to continue. He'll scream in pain, it'll be over. And on a more simple thought Robin he was also taking away the ability for Joe to kick the arms So he's going to pass Joe now. Now he passes Joe. So that was incredibly hard work that he never gave up on. Brad Sullivan never gave up on it. Now he wants to settle into half guard here and then try to pass to a mount. And in a lot of cases you don't pass to the mount unless it's there. But in this case if you believe you're the better grappler and he's shown that he is it would be a nice place to be to get Either get him to turn, uh, Joe fights back to half that guard. That was great stop from Joe to be able to slide back into that half guard position. Took away the option to now just straight go to mount. He'd have to pull so the leg through. He's trapped here. So you look at his left arm is trapped from behind. And he's getting free of it. Now in Sullivan, the fights of Sullivan's I called, he had some, some really, really sketchy and clever ways to trap one arm while he was doing damage to you. You saw it there. He reached behind Joe to grab his arm from the back. He's got a lot of tricky little setups here. With the way he's got the arm position, Rob, now he gave it up, but I thought he might have been trying to yeah. set for an arm triangle here. He wants to put his knee on the arm and trap Joe into a crucifix type position. And Joe is doing the right thing. Joe keeps sliding away. Still a yeah. minute and a half to work with here in round two. They're probably quite surprised, their whole team, that Joe's got what he's got here. But he did, he, he fought to get back to guard there and Sullivan fought to keep him here. Yeah, now we're at half guard yeah. position as Joe's trying to fire up top from his back, Sullivan still really looking to pull through. He wants yeah. mount here, Robin. Yes, We've he seen does. it a couple of times. Yeah, and he should. This is what you want. So he's going to go TP up high and then slide his knee on an angle. Joe can rest here, but not for very long. Yes. Sullivan will look to do that. Once you get there, you start punching and elbowing and try to force Joe to give his back, which is a natural reaction, especially the less time you fought in a grappling and striking environment. Often it's natural you give up your back when you get punched. It almost seems like Sullivan's a little bit surprised that yeah. Joe hasn't panicked here from this position. He's, he's yeah. stalled down a little bit. He, he keeps setting with that arm behind the head, almost like he's trying to set the arm triangle, yes. he continuously gives it up. He is, but he's looking for Joe to do Now Joe reaches the other underhook and he's gonna try to get back to guards and that makes both of them work. Joe's arm is trapped now and it's back out. Sullivan almost had what he wanted there. So Sullivan, the one thing he isn't doing is really ri ripping, and Joe comes back. Now that guillotine's not there. The Stratford audience likes it, but, but it's not really there. Joe fought very well here, but you gotta give this round to Sullivan now. Right, so if you're Sullivan, you got 10 seconds to try to land one or two punches here, and you really want to get that if you can. And Joe's got him stacked in with the legs tight, so he didn't give him the opportunity to do it. But yeah, Brad Sullivan just had a great round, Robin, for himself to be able to get Joe to the ground, to be able to extend that control. He kept working, 
Even when it looked like he had slowed the action a little bit, he was doing enough trying to move positions, yeah. change positions, advance through that he's not going to allow the official to stand them up, which yeah. is exactly what he doesn't want to have happen. And he did enough to be able to keep that control the rest of the way. Yes, and he took some damage in those first few minutes. And he, it wasn't just given to him. That's the credit that he deserves. And that's what I saw in him in the two fights I called. Sometimes you don't get what you want. So I'm trying to get a position, I don't get it. For a lot of people, they go, okay, I guess it's not there, I'll try something else. He'll try again and again, he'll try a different way, he'll change one thing and go again. You'll push back, he'll push back even harder. It's that mental fortitude, that, that desire to win, that commitment to win positions that makes Brad Sullivan so tough. Joe and his team knew that going in. That's why they liked this fight for a, for a pro MMA debut. But you better be in shape for this round. That goes for both guys. Final five here. Joe Tipping, Brad Sullivan. This is going to be exciting. It seems to us, Robin, I think like one round apiece coming into the third. Yep, yep. I would have to say that. So, and, and Joe wants to be moving in a circle. Not just playing forward and backward, which he's done well and he's been successful with, but moving in a circle, trying to get off on different angles, and then striking him there. Striking and getting away exactly like that. In round two, he didn't do that. After that strike, he'd stay there for an extra second. And that's all Sullivan needs. And this is where Sullivan doesn't want to be. He's on the outside of a legend in Muay Thai. And this is, this is going to be difficult for him because he's caught on the outside now. Joe's picked up yeah. his timing, and he's moving well. Yeah, and uh, for Joe, if they correctly, I believe correctly believe that it's a round apiece, you don't want to be in a rush here. If this goes this way for three, four minutes and we don't get a lot of damage done, that's okay as long as we don't get in that same position we ended up in round two. If you're Brad Sullivan, hey, you know, this is cool. We'll throw some kicks. We'll try to react to Joe's work, but we'd rather get to some type of grappling exchange in the first two and a half minutes. Tried the Superman punch there, did Sullivan, but Mar uh, Marshan Tipping was already well out of the way. Robin, as we get to this point in the fight and the way that the positioning is right now, nice little leg kick from Crew Joe. It's he, it's he's there in a now. much better spot than he was in round two yep. and even round one. His yep. back was to the fence when Sullivan was trying to come in. Now Joe is taking That's the middle right. of the cage and forcing yep. Sullivan around. Yes, you're exactly right. And it's because Joe's not overly moving forward. He's there, he can feel that, the experience of feeling that little hot zone, that little high temperature danger range, and he's staying on the edge of it. So by not committing to being within grabbing range, Joe is staying on the outside. And, and if Sullivan overcommits, Joe will uppercut or knee him in the face, right? So, so this is now Joe controlling range, and we hear that a lot. Control the range, control the distance, range management, we hear that. But what does it really mean? It means finding the difference between hot and cold and manipulating it. Where are we in danger, where are we safe? And Joe's playing that game very well now, two minutes into the third round. Tipping is really beating up that lead leg of Sullivan right now. He's landing kicks inside and out, and that's forcing Sullivan to attack from distance and Tipping's waiting on him to do it. And whoa, that time flashed to left, it was dangerous, right back to the outside of the front leg. Yes, and when when uh, Sullivan faints or hesitates, that's when Joe goes, and that's that's experience. And again, coming in that time, right hand. Sullivan leans forward. And good for Sullivan to get the jab off. Sullivan has to believe, there's a big one. Sullivan has to believe in his own strikes when he throws them. You're not fighting a guy's experience. You're just fighting a man. He's a man in front of you. You have to commit to his. And he hasn't thrown really a right hand yet. And, and maybe the patience there is a big one. Maybe the patience has been helpful. Good work there by Joe. Yeah, going, tipping tried to going back to the body. Batter hit the it body a few times. get out of this takedown situation. And he's doing good work with it. You can see that stung Sullivan. But he is doggedly hanging yep, on. Smart. Oh, All so those he's punches. the ankle. Uh, Sullivan now has picked the ankle. He needed to, Robin. He had to have it because Tipping was destroying the body there. Now there's there's a referee or there's a judge somewhere who has not taken note of Joe was in charge for three and Sullivan's in charge for one and a half. Sullivan will now look to attack strikes and wrestling. Joe's going to shake off one leg if he can. And he's going to get back to half guard. That's something they wouldn't have expected. If... Sullivan stays here for a minute and a half. Joe won the first three and a half. That might be a Joe round. So if I'm Sullivan, I know I have to 
also do damage. I can't just sit here for a round and a half because a good ref will give it to the other guy. He's got to leave the impression That's in the right. judges' minds that yeah. he did the damage as he's working yep. from the top in half guard. One minute of holding him here is not the same as three minutes of getting punched and kicked. And he, he needs to know that. I'm sure his corner knows that. And Sullivan has to open up here. How about Joe tipping from the bottom, trying everything he can yep. to reverse the position, steer him to the outside as... Sullivan clasps the hands again. He, it seems like he's really been working to set up the arm triangle and Tipping's giving him nothing. Now he's using shoulder pressure. See the direction of Joe's face? Brad is now using shoulder pressure. He's gonna trap Joe's arm and he's gonna try to throw punches or there's a Kimura here. You can finish a Kimura from that position but he's free again. So 30 seconds remaining. If I'm Sullivan's corner, I need him to do damage. I need him to elbow Joe, Joe Tipping here. Yeah, there, there hasn't yeah. been a lot of damage done. There's been a lot of positional movement from Sullivan to try to set something up that hasn't come. And if I'm Crew Joe's corner, I need him to get up because we don't want to trust that a judge may know the correct thing or may agree with our opinion. Yes. We want to get up and we want to make that them see it the way we see it and that we're winning these positions still. 10 seconds to go, Joe trying to explode out of it. Now Wall walks, he flipped the position over right at the buzzer. Will that help him in the end on the judges' scorecards? As Joe Tipping was the first one to pop back up to his feet. Robin, that yep. was a close, tight very, fight. Very close fight, very close fight. It's all gonna yep. come down, I think, to the third round and how the judges scored that. And you set it up perfectly. It was a minute and a half of control from Sullivan on the ground, but Joe Tipping had three minutes plus of beating up the head beating up the legs, going to the body. That was all his advantage on Brad Sullivan. Yeah. yeah, and in the end, you can't be mad at a judge whichever way they see it. They're human beings trying their best to decipher who won a complex five minutes between two great athletes. So you can't be mad whichever way it went. Both men did their best. Both men fought their hearts out, and we're about to find out who won. My broadcast partner, Robin Black, will head into the cage. He'll have a conversation with the winner of this fight as Mr. Throwdown Pete Trevino is getting the judges' scorecards. Joe Tipping did not look like somebody in his first mixed martial arts fight. He looked very calm and experienced. Moving forward, he will want to continue to work on the ground game, but Brad Sullivan had that in his mind from second one of this fight. He wanted to set up and drag Joe to the ground and do his best to control position from there. He had his moments. The second round were strong for Brad Sullivan, but the first round went to Joe Tipping. The third round, well, we'll see how the judges scored. It was advantage on the feet for a longer period of time to Joe Tipping. But is that how the judges are going to see it after Brad Sullivan finished the fight with a minute and a half of control? Or did that last second reverse do the trick for Joe Tipping? We are gonna find out in just moments as Mr. Throwdown will take it away with the scores. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause for both of the fighters in this cage. After three professional rounds of mixed martial arts, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Woods scores this contest 30, 29 to 28 for Marchand. Judge Vandermeer scores the contest 29 to 28 for Sullivan. And Judge McNeil scores the contest 30 to 27 for your winner by split decision. The Harrington Hitman, Joe Marchand. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for both these gentlemen. Great fight, Brad. Crew Joe, yeah. I watched you guys training for this fight. You were training, you knew that was a really tough guy. He gave you everything you were looking for in a pro fight. Yeah, you know, like uh, we had six opponents for this fight. Um, we trained for a lot of different people and then uh, our original guy got hurt and Brad called uh, and took the fight. I think it was a week and a half notice. I mean, he's, uh, he's a slick ground guy, you know, like I'm only a blue belt. I think you're a brown belt or higher, so like, I didn't get tapped in that fight. I did some, some good things, but back to the drawing board. I didn't perform as, as well as I wanted to, but uh, first pro fight, right? 
I think when both you guys go back and look at it, you're going to be very proud of that fight. It was a great, great fight against a tough dude who flew over here, took it on a couple weeks. So thanks to Brad. Uh, you got lots of people here, lots of people to thank, crew. Shotford, make some noise, man. Like, come on. Yeah, you know, like, it's... Uh, I'd like to thank all my sponsors, uh, all my uh, friends and family that uh, came here. My training partners, I, I, I run a gym in Stratford, so all of my training partners are basically my students. So I've been beating them up for the last like, six months. So thanks guys for all the work. Uh, I'd like to thank my uh, team of coaches, uh, Chris Bello, Jeff Harrison, and Sid Barnier. Without them, I wouldn't be here. Thanks to PFC for putting on a good show here, close, uh, close to home in Toronto. Thanks for the fans, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'll be back better, I'll be back better. Little things to work on. It was an honor to call you a fight, crew. All right, let's hear it for crew Joe Marchand tipping. <laughs>